Hello and welcome to chapter 16, <clears throat> module 16, troubleshooting static and default routes. Um, so in this chapter, you're not going to write a lot. You're going to take a lot of snippet, a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call it, print screens. So this is the first print screen I want you to write. I'm not going to do slides. So um, these are the commands that you can use to troubleshoot static routes and default routes. All right. So keep that open after you take that, and we'll practice some of this. What I did is I op I, um, I made a packet tracer. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to ask you to take some snapshots at a certain point, okay? So because I want to discuss the whole thing in here about how routing works and static routes and, and so on. So you'll, you'll see it happening in real life. All right, so you have a network, 192.68.10.0. A link with 101004 and another network on the other end, 172.16.100.64 with slash 26. All right, PC1 wants to reach PC2. They're already being configured with these IP addresses and their default gateways. Okay, so let me just go to router one and I'm going to show you how to configure router one. Just do basic configuration. So I'm going to say no. All right. Enable, config T, um, no IP domain, look up, and the host name of R1. Okay, I'm going to go to the, now, first thing I'm going to do, control Z, and I'm going to show IP route, display the routing table. These are the codes in the routing table, right? And there's nothing in there. The, cat, the the gateway of last resort is not set. If you hit the upper arrow key and you do the pipe and you're going to say begin gateway, all right? So I just don't want to see the codes. I just want to see the routes in the routing table starting with the word after gateway. There's nothing in there. All right, so... So here's how we populate directly connected route. If I go in and enable this interface, so if I'm going to go in big T and I'm going to the interface G0 slash zero and I give it the IP address 192.168.10.254 with a mask of 255.255.0. Uh, now, as soon as I type no shot, and I activate it and I do control Z, hit the upper arrow key. I uh, oh, let me see. Forget about this. Show IP route. And I see that the default gateway, I'm sorry, not the default gateway, a directly connected route 192.168.10.0 was in there, right? Um, if I type shut down, this entry will be gone. So a link, also a, lo a local route directly to dot two fifty four is also in there, in case it's directly it, a packet is directly going there. All right, so let's do dot five. Uh, the serial triple zero. This is connected to the serial triple zero. So I'm going to do config t. I'm going to go interface serial triple zero, and I'm going to give it the IP add. 10.10.10.5 with a mask of slash 32, right? Now, I know um, if I just hover, hover over the uh, interface, I see that it's um, it has a little clock. That means it's a DCE end. And this is this one connected to serial uh, 001. So what that means is I have to put a clock rate on this interface, uh, we typically use it as 64,000 bits per second. Clock rate is needed so they can, because they're directly connected, so they're synchronized so that the destination knows exactly how fast you're going to be transmitting data. In this case, it's 64,000 bits per second. All right, so let's type no shot. All right, it went down. It's not going to go up yet because the other interface has not been connected yet. So let's go to R2, 
and configure that. All right, I'm going to say no. Ian, config T. Uh, you see, it got stopped. See, I had to I had to pause the video because I typed in the command wrong, and before I typed in the um, the no IP domain lookup. All right, so let's go to config space T, no IP domain lookup. All right, now we're safe. Let's do a host name of capital R2. Let me go to the interface G0 slash zero and give it the IP at 172.16.100.16. With a mask of slash 26, 192 at the end. Uh, let me make sure. Right, dot 62 is slash 26, right? Actually, um, this should have been dot 64, dot zero. Let me fix that up. I don't want to confuse you. Okay. All right, now we're good. So going back to the router. And let's do no shut. All right, and now I'm going to the interface serial 001 and give it the IP at 10.10.10.10.6 with 255.255.255.252. Now, it's not, doesn't need a clock rate. It's a DTE device. So all you need is a no shot. No shot. All right, I'm going to do control Z. And I'm going to type show IP route. Okay, so this is the routing table for R2. And I'm going to um, do the show route for R1. So do control Z and do show IP route for R1. Um, let me minimize this. And I want you to side by side so you can juxtapose both routers. Take a snapshot of this, the two routers and their um, routing tables. So yeah, you know what? Let's do this. All right, so take a snapshot just like that. So you'll see your routing table, right? This guy knows the directly connected. I mean, this is the R, R1 serial ports. You see this is the parent, and these are the children. This is the parent, and this is the children, right? And so on. All right, so when you're done with that, We'll go back to the packet tracer, and we'll take each one of those later on. Now, let's say go to PC1 and go to the command prompt, and PC1 is going to type in IP config, IP config, and to figure out what his IP address is. All right, it's beautiful. Let me ping. Um, PC2, which is 192.168, not 192, 172.16.100.1. Uh, Destination unreachable. Why is it unreachable? You may ask. Well, the reason you go unreachable, this is what happens. Let me go back to the uh, router one um, routing table. So this is what happened. PC1 took the packet, put the destination IP address on it. The destination IP address is 172.16.100.1. That's PC2 IP address, right? And he puts it on the packet. Then he puts it into a frame with his MAC address on it. Now he sends out an ARP request to everybody here. Nobody responds with that IP address. Then he's go by default goes to his gateway. His gateway puts in gives him his MAC address, right? He puts the MAC address of the default gateway on his frame and he sends the frame to the router. The router 
opens up the frame, pulls the packet out, and it looks at the destination IP address, right? And then goes to the routing table. And here's the routing table of R1. And he looks at the, he looks at, he does an ending with this, the destination IP address, remember, is 172.16.100.0 network. And does it match when he does the ending? So he skips to, the, to this parent. Does the masking with slash 24 is 172.16.100 uh, ended with slash 24 gives you 192 and 68? No. So you go to the bottom and there is no gateway of last resort and therefore the packet is dropped. And that is why you get on PC1 destination unreachable. Who's, de who's telling you that? Your default gateway. So what we're going to do, we're going to type in a static route in here on router 1 to tell it on how to reach it. So config C, we're going to tell the router IP route. Anybody wants to go to 172.16.100.0 network with 255.255.255.192 mask, Please send them out of my serial triple zero interface. I'm typing my exit interface in this case. All right. So let me do control Z. Let me make sure, verify that it's in the routing table. And there it is. So now I have a route on how to reach anybody that starts with 172.16.100. And I'm going to send them to that exit interface. So let's do the ping again. Hit the upper arrow key. And now we wait, we wait, we wait. It doesn't look like it's working out. Timed out. TTL number reached zero. Well, let's see what happened. Again, when he pulled the packet, now when he looked up the destination IP address, there was a match, right? So the destination IP address 172.16.100.1 when you end it with slash 26, the result will be 172.16.100.0. So I'm going to send it to the serial triple zero. So the packet now is sent to this interface, serial 00, 00, 00, 00 puts it into another frame called HDLC because this is um, a WAN link. We'll talk about that on our last course. It goes here. He pulls the packet out, looks at the destination IP address, and in the in his routing table it will get a match he sends it to gigabit zero zero see right he's going to get a match so when he gets a match and sends it here here what does he do he sends an aarp request requesting the mac address of pc2 pc2 sends him back the mac address and then he sends him back and he says oh somebody wants to ping me and he replies back he sends it back but the problem here is what now he doesn't have an address to come back to 192.168 because it's not in his routing table, right? When, so that's why the packet stayed here. TTL number reached zero. And then it was you will, they send us a timed exceeded ICMP echo reply, right? So what we need to do to fix that is to go in here and config... Hey, let me put in a route, IP route. If anybody wants to reach 192.168.10.0 with 255.255.255.0 network. Now, instead of typing my exit interface, I'm going to type the next hop address. I'll use that instead this time, which is 10.10.10.5, right? All right, let's verify that it got into the routing table. Show IP route. And there it is. Perfect. So now we should be able to ping because now they'll be able to talk to each other. So if hit the upper arrow key and I hit enter and they do reply. See, I replied from 100.1, which is this guy right here. And that is great. All right, please take a picture of this showing that PC2 was able to reach uh, PC, PC1 was able to reach PC2 along with the default router right in here.
All right, that's it. Submit what, what I told you and I'll see.